Hey guys, sorry I'm not here today, but I didn't want to leave you guys out, so you're going to watch this video on the notes that I would be giving if I was there. So we're going to be talking about cellular respiration. Here is your bell work for the day, so I will give you a few moments to write this down. You can either do it in your notes, or if you know exactly where your bell work chart, chart is, go ahead and get that out. Alright, now let's look. I want you to brainstorm the chemical formula for the cellular respiration, but look at what is on these two boxes. We've already talked about photosynthesis, and remember, as a review, photosynthesis is found in plants. It uses sunlight to make glucose, it takes in carbon dioxide, it gives off oxygen. So carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight makes glucose, which is that sugar, and oxygen. But look over here for respiration eat plants to get glucose, which is that sugar molecule, you take in oxygen, give off carbon dioxide, so glucose plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Do you think these have some sort of relationship? What is that relationship? And write it down for your bulwark of the day. Right now, we should be in your notes where it says cellular respiration. This is the overview or the overall definition of cellular respiration. It says the process where cells use oxygen and glucose to create ATP. All right, remember this molecule, we talked about it. It's known as the energy molecule. All right, how many phosphates are in ATP? three phosphates. And what happens when you drop off this phosphate? Go ahead and make the noise with me. So energy is being released. This should be a review. Alright, this formula, again, you need to highlight, underline, star around, heart around it, box it, know it, all right? The good news is you should already know it. If you know the formula for photosynthesis, it is the exact opposite. So now you have this glucose molecule, which is C6H12O6, plus six molecules of O2, yields six molecules of CO2 plus six molecules of H2O, which is water, plus ATP. So make sure you have that in your notes correct. One glucose molecule can produce up to 38 molecules of ATP. So in this process of cellular respiration that we're going to be talking about, we're going to look to see how this one sugar molecule, remember it is a monomer of a carbohydrate, can make up to 38 molecules of ATP. All right. Just like we did in photosynthesis, we're going to break down cellular respiration into three phases. You have the first phase, which is glycolysis, the second phase, which is Krebs cycle, and the third phase, which is the electron transport chain. So the first one is glycolysis. The actual name of glycolysis means the splitting of sugar. It occurs in the cytoplasm, so guess what? The first stage of cellular respiration does not occur in the mitochondria. It actually occurs in the cytoplasm outside of the mitochondria. It requires glucose, also ATP, and some enzymes. The results in the glucose molecule becoming split to form two three-carbon molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvic. This is important to understand. We're going to talk about this molecule again in just a second. But this is the first stage. What goes in, because remember I told you we're going to go back and forth of what goes in, what comes out, what are the products, what are the reactants. So what goes in is the sugar molecule, which is glucose. What comes out is these two molecules of pyruvate. Alright, so... 
Here is the overview of what we just talked about. Remember that the monomer of a carbohydrate, I always draw like this six-sided figure, and there are carbons at each corner of this six-sided figure, which is glucose, hence the chemical formula of glucose, C6H12O6. So in glycolysis, you're going to take this glucose molecule, and with the help of some enzymes, remember, they speed up chemical reactions by lowering activation energy. This glucose molecule is going to be split in half. When it's split in half, it's going to create two pyruvic acids or pyruvates. And guess what? Each pyruvate is going to have three carbons. So when you split six in half, you're going to get three. So this is what this pyruvate acid or pyruvic acid is coming from. So glucose breaks down into pyruvate. The other thing to note are this, these two molecules. All right, it's going to create two ATPs, but it's going to require four, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. Oops. All right, so let's break it down. I put some pictures with this. So we have the reactants, which is what goes in glycolysis. And then we have the products, what comes out. So what goes in is that six carbon sugar, glucose, but also requires two ATPs. What are the products? You have this pyruvate, which you can count right here, that has three carbons, and also four ATP. So the question is, how many net gain ATPs? So if we have two that is required to be put in, Four that comes out, two of those ATPs are going to cancel out two in the product, so the net gain should be two. So remember that glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm, so this is what we're talking about. Now I've put this diagram in your notes, hint, hint, wink, wink, you might see it again. So make sure you're adding to your notes. You might want to circle glycolysis and make sure you know that it happens in the cytoplasm, which is outside of the mitochondria. So remember that mitochondria is that organelle that looks like a kidney bean that produces all of these ATPs. So the overall process of glycolysis, glucose goes in and then two molecules of pyruvate comes out. All right, now we're moving into the second step of cellular respiration, which is known as the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, energy released during the breaking apart of the special molecule called acetyl-CoA is used to generate NADH and FADH2. All right, these molecules are more taxicabs that we've been talking about. They're going to pick up electrons and drop them off. They're going to pick up electrons and drop them off. As acetyl-CoA is being broken down, carbon dioxide is being released as a waste product, all right? Think about what we breathe in, and remember, don't say air, and what do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide. So this is where this carbon dioxide is coming from. It's gonna come out of the Krebs cycle as a waste product. Those taxicab molecules, the NADH and FADH2, are the electron carriers, and they help support or supply energy to the next Step, the electron transport chain, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. The Krebs cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, which is part of the mitochondria that you will need to know. So here is the overview of the Krebs cycle. You have pyruvate, which is coming in from that product of glycolysis. And now there is kind of like a mini step between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And that step is going to convert pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. When acetyl-CoA um, is required to go into the Krebs cycle, and basically we're not going to talk about what happens in this Krebs cycle, but we're going to talk about um, what comes out. So what comes out is these electron carriers, also known as a taxi cab, NADH, FADH2, and also ATP. And let's go back to your original diagram. I want you to circle where the Krebs cycle is. And I want you to write 
down that it happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now here are the reactants and the products. So this is what goes in. This is what comes out of the Krebs cycle. So remember, what goes in is pyruvate, but before pyruvate can actually go into the Krebs cycle, there's like a little mini step that converts it to acetyl-CoA. It's basically a bond with an enzyme. So acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle. What is produced is those two taxi cab molecules, the electron carriers, NADH, FADH2, carbon dioxide, the waste product. Remember, we breathe out CO2 as a waste product. We gotta get rid of it from our bodies and then two ATPs, two energy molecules. So if you're doing the math right now, we've had two ATPs created in glycolysis, two ATPs created in the Krebs cycle. So make sure you have what goes in, what comes out. You might wanna put a little star by acetyl-CoA because you have to remember that there's a mini step that converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. All right, so here's the visual overview of what we were just talking about. So there's that mini step. So here's this pyruvate and here's the acetyl-CoA. So this is that mini step. So that acetyl-CoA is gonna go into the Krebs cycle, which this is the Krebs cycle, it's just a different name for it here. And what's gonna come out are two ATPs and this electron carrier. So this um, visual representation of the NADH is like a bucket. Remember, I always call NADH, FADH2 um, little taxi cab molecules. They're going to pick up something, which in this case are electrons, and they're going to drop them off somewhere else. So now we're moving into the third step of cellular respiration, which is known as the electron transport chain. I will abbreviate the electron transport chain into the ETC. Um, so what happens in the ETC is that it's going to use the passengers from the Krebs cycle, so the little taxi cab molecules, and it's going to create the ATP. Because if you're doing the math, we've only created four, and what I told you at the beginning of this presentation, that it can one glucose can create up to 38 ATP molecules. So the electron transport chain occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria called the Christi. So we talked about the organelle mitochondria and about how it has this inner membrane um, surface. And this is where the electron transport chain is going to occur. So just as a review, what's also going to be happening from those electron donors, those uh, carrier molecules, you're going to get ATP from adding that phosphate from ADP. So remember, here is that ADP, ATP um, cycle. So when we eat, when we eat glucose, this is what's happening in our body. These little ADPs, remember diphosphate, which two, is going to be charged again with a triphosphate. So this is how the ETC works. Right now we should be on the back side of your notes in the third step of the electron transport chain. So NADH donates an electron to the first molecule in the transport chain. So it's going to drop off its passenger, which is an electron. The first electron acceptor uses the energy from the electron to pump a hydrogen across that inner membrane, so that Christie, which is that inner mitochondrial membrane. The first electron acceptor then passes an electron to the second electron acceptor. And I know that you have to copy this down in your notes, so I'm going to do a few um, extra seconds on this slide. But basically, as you're copying down, you should be listening. Those taxi cabs are going to be dropping off their electron um, passengers, and basically they're going to kick them out of the taxi cab, and they're going to be bouncing down the stairs. So it sounds kind of mean. Um, hopefully a real taxi cab driver wouldn't do this. But as that electron is getting pushed out, it's going to be dropping down the stairs one at a time. So it's going to be passing from an electron donor to an electron donor to an electron donor. And as that's happening, these hydrogens are going to be pumped across the Christie, which is that inner membrane surface. And we will see what is going to be waiting at the bottom of the stairs. All right. If y'all need more time, please ask the sub to pause this presentation. Or if you're watching it on your phone, pause it now. 
All right, now the NADH donates an electron to the first of the several a series of protein molecules embedded into this cell membrane, or the, the inner membrane. Each protein molecule uses the energy from the electron to generate ATP and then passes the electron to the next protein to the chain. So this is talking about those electrons kind of jumping down the stairs in the electron transport chain. So when the energy is used up, the electron is passed to oxygen, which is waiting as the final electron acceptor. So oxygen is actually hanging out at the bottom of the stairs that's going to capture that final electron acceptor. And you'll hear me ask all the time, what is the final electron acceptor in cellular respiration? And the answer is oxygen. And we're going to talk about what is made, because remember, oxygen is a reactant. So again, if you need some more time to um, write this down in your notes, you can pause the video at this time. Here are the visual representations. So you can just kind of take a break and let's talk about it. So here is your taxi cab, it's the bucket. And as that taxi cab drops off the passengers, they're going to bounce down the electron transport chain, these stairs. So it's going from electron donor to electron donor to electron donor. And these hydrogens are going to be pumping back and forth across the membrane. So at the bottom of the stairs, oxygen is going to be that final electron acceptor. And what happens as those hydrogens are being pumped across, what do you think is made when I have two hydrogens and one oxygen? I'll give you a hint. What is this molecule? It's the Mickey Mouse molecule. If I have two hydrogens and an oxygen, it's going to create water. All right? Think about the overall product of cellular respiration. Water is a waste product and CO2. CO2, carbon dioxide, comes out of the Krebs cycle. Water, the waste product, comes out of the electron transport chain. All right, now as these electrons are being bounced down the stairs, the most important step of this whole process is occurring. 34 to 36 ATPs are being created during this process. And obviously we use these ATPs for energy because when that phosphate breaks off, energy is being released. So flip back over to the front part of your notes, back to your diagram, I want you to circle where the electron transport chain is happening, or the ETC, make sure you know that I abbreviate it sometimes, and write that the electron transport chain is happening in the Christie. If you don't remember what the Christie is, it is the inner membrane surface. Remember the Krebs cycle is happening in the matrix, which is kind of like um, the jelly-like substance in the mitochondria, very similar to the chloroplast in photosynthesis. All right, now this is one of my favorite visual diagrams of cellular respiration, because it talks about each of the three steps, what goes in and what comes out. So this is the overview. You have, first of all, let's identify the three steps. You have glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis requires two ATP, so that's a reactant. It produces four, which gives a net gain of two. Make sure you know how we got a net gain of two. Two U's cancels out two that's produced, so you have a net gain of two. Glucose also goes in to glycolysis. Remember that six carbon sugar. Now in glycolysis, which means the splitting of sugar, this glucose molecule is going to be split into two pyruvates. So it's gonna be two three carbon molecules. Now remember, there is a mini step from pyruvate what has to happen? It's going to bond with an uh, enzyme and create acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA is then going to go into the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, it produces C 
CO2 as waste products. It also produces NADH and FADH2, those taxi cabs. So they're picking up the passengers here and they're going to drop their passengers off at the third step, which is the electron transport chain. So they're going to drop off their electrons. Those electrons and passengers are going to be bouncing down the stairs and it's going to harvest 36 ATP. And what else as a waste product? What is the final electron acceptor? Oxygen. And when two hydrogens meet those oxygen, it's going to create water. All right, so here are the reactants and the products of the ETC. The reactants are the full taxicab molecules and oxygen. The products are ATP and water. So remember, oxygen is that final electron acceptor. It's waiting at the bottom of the stairs. So the full taxicabs. Now, when these taxicabs drop off their passengers, what happens to them? Do they go away as a waste product? No, they go back to the Krebs cycle to pick up more passengers. So remember, the taxicab molecules are going back and forth between the ETC and the Krebs cycle, picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off. If I was there, I would be running around the front of the classroom like a crazy woman. So remember, these are the electron carriers. They're going to pick up passengers and drop them off. So one more time, here is the overview of the three stages of cellular respiration. You have glycolysis, which is the splitting of sugar, so it uses glycolysis. It forms two molecules of pyruvate. Remember, what happens in, to pyruvate before it goes into the Krebs cycle? It bonds with the enzyme and creates acetyl-CoA. When it binds and creates acetyl-CoA, it goes into the Krebs cycle and it's going to create the NADH and FADH2. So it's going to pick up those passengers in the Krebs cycle. Also, make sure you know that the Krebs cycle releases CO2 as a waste product. That's where that carbon dioxide we breathe out comes from. It comes from the Krebs cycle. The third step is the electron transport chain. It uses NADH and FADH2, so it uses the passengers and it's going to create ATP and also create water because oxygen is that final electron acceptor. So these are the overview, what is used, what comes out, what is used, what comes out. And remember to add the waste product. So Krebs cycle comes out, CO2, what comes out of the electron transport chain as a waste product is water. So how many ATPs will come out of each step to create a total of 38 ATPs? Now remember, depending on the glucose and depending on the process, it's basically anywhere between 34 to 38 ATPs. So you might see any of those numbers on the test. So maybe put a star by this in your notes and say anywhere between 34 to 38. So here are the three steps. The first step, glycolysis, produces two. ATPs. Remember, technically it produces four, but it uses two. So those two that it used will cancel out two that it produces, so it has a net gain of two molecules. Two molecules are produced in the Krebs cycle, and 34 molecules are produced in the electron transport chain. So this is the key step to create these ATP molecules. And remember, think about how fast this has to happen. Because what did I tell you about a single muscle cell it uses 10 million molecules of ATP per second? So this has to happen very quickly. Make sure if you would like to copy this down in your notes. Um, actually, it tells you to copy this down in your notes. Um, go ahead and pause this and copy it down. You can even add circle. This is step one, step two, step three. Make a star about the acetyl-CoA. Make sure you have the waste product, CO2 and H2O. So here is the flow chart of cellular respiration. I want you to fill it out on your own. Glucose plus oxygen. What are the three steps? You have glycolysis the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, 
and those are the overview products. So here are the over, our overall reactants, what goes in, this is the overall products. Here are the three steps of cellular respiration. You might want to add what goes in, what comes out, what goes in, what comes out, what goes in, what comes out. Pause this video and I'm not going to give you the answers until I see you again. Okay? So do your best. Go back and rewatch this if you need to. Create your own flow chart in your notes. watch this video if you need to. Alright? Now, make sure um, you don't need to do Alright, now, make sure if you need to, re-watch this video and make sure your notes are filled out. I know I'm not here today, but I do not want you to fall behind and use this as an excuse for you not taking good notes. Alright? These are your notes for your quiz. You will have a quiz on Tuesday of next week, which is going to be October the 28th. Your unit test, unit four test, will be next Friday, October the 31st. So make sure you have your notes and make sure they are complete. Um, so the next time I see you, I'm going to check them. All right? Be on your best behavior, and I will see you all when I get back.